Welcome back to Control. Yes, this time, the second and final DLC, AWE or Altered World Event, is actually out. We're actually going to play the DLC this time. So, uh, that DLC, in case you didn't know, is kind of sort of a crossover between Control and Alan Wake, one of the previous games Remedy Games created. Uh, just as a reminder, during our playthrough of Control, we found a lot of things talking about about Alan Wake and the town where all that took place and, and everything that happened. And it made it clear in the game that the stuff that happened in the game Alan Wake is actually part of the same universe. It was an altered world event that happened. So they are quite literally the same universe. It says, investigate the sector elevator. Um, before that, though, Arish seems to have something new to talk to us about. None. Looks like it. Man, I never thought I'd be working in the executive sector. Look at me now, Ma. <laughs> Such a goofy smile. It's kind of cute. Wait, these aren't actually any new things. Was it just that line of dialogue? I'll see you later. You know where I'll be. All right. Nice talking with you. I don't suppose Emily would be in the boardroom. They probably are still at the nail, right? Oh, maybe they flip-flop back and forth. Doorways, then which is the object Nothing new to talk about with them, though. To the elevator, then. No way. This also, I thought the cat ears would disappear when we left the foundation areas, but apparently not. I guess that's why a couple people have been asking me, how do I get rid of the damn cat ears? I guess you don't? I, I could see how that'd be a problem for some people if they really didn't like them, but I love them, so sweet. We're so cute. Darkness engulfed the elevator. There was something there, reaching for her, trying to make her act. It was a distress call. Phaeton sensed a drowning man, a hunger in the dark. Investigation sector. Investigation sector, huh? We should check this out. Heck yeah. By the way, no surprise, I'm going to be a bit rusty at this game. <laughs> so excuse me. And we're kidding about dark. Whoa. Wait a minute, investigations? Is this a sector we never actually went to before? Oh wow, that is a beautiful sight. An entirely new sector. Look at all those question marks. Now anytime I see a painting like that, gotta know, is there something behind it? Guess not. Hello? Anyone here? Guess not. I can't wait to get new Emily and and fade in dialogue. Seems a lot more crowded than the rest of the bureau. Oops. Dang it. Official findings report regarding Dr. Casper Darling. Per authorization from Mr. Kirkland, internal investigation something something was launched into the ethical practices of Dr. Casper Darling, head of research. Despite the accounts of anonymous regarding inhumane treatment of a currently housed in the Bureau, our official findings regarding this were inconclusive. Numerous obstacles arose during this investigation. The majority of sector personnel seemed to be wholly unaware of any such contained there. One confirmed the codename to be 
<laughs> but all files pertaining to that name were inaccessible, being classified under the highest clearance level. Investigators were similarly blocked from entering the research wing to interview its staff. The matter was further complicated by the lack of clarity on whether non-human paranatural entities warrant humane treatment. While this investigation cannot address any charges against Dr. Darling, we do recommend an investigation into research. Oh, um, new hotline as well. Darkness engulfed the elevator. There was something there. A presence. Jesse Faden could hear it. A call. It was faint. Reaching for her from a dark place. Faden was sensitive to visitations. She had them all the time. From her guiding star and the previous director. She was the perfect receiver. As if she'd been made for this. Faden paused to feel it. The force at play here. It was changing things around her, subtle, trying to make her act. Faden didn't like that. Her guide felt it too. Polaris didn't flare up in defense as with the hiss. So it wasn't all bad. Not a hostile transmission. It was powerful, but it was coming from far away and made weak because of the distance. It was a distress call. Faden sensed a drowning man, a man desperate to escape. She sensed something else, too. A hunger in the dark. Not unlike the hostile resonance. Waiting. She knew that desperate acts can have grim consequences. It was this, more than the man's despair, that made her follow the call. The elevator lights winked back on. The darkness receded like a memory. There was a new button on the elevator control panel. Investigation sector. Faden pressed the button. The elevator doors slid shut with practice bravado. I should mention the thing about Alan Wake in that game was that pretty much whatever they wrote came true. They wrote things into existence. And that was them writing what we just did into existence, which is a little bit disturbing. Don't like to be controlled by somebody else. But am I being controlled or just suggested to do what they want me to do so perfectly that I just end up doing it anyway? All oh, right, you gotta hold down G to read the note. Oops. Mr. Dennis, a request came through recently from an FBI agent asking for all our files on Bright Falls, specifically on the disappearance of the author, Alan Wake. Per the Interagency Information Exchange Agreement, I had some paper pushers gather up a folder of all the pre-approved files. Don't worry, all the inappropriate material is either missing or redacted. But I'm writing to let you know that we received this request from a special, special agent named Alex Casey. Sounds familiar, right? That's because Alex Casey is the name of the fictional detective in those hard-boiled crime books Alan Wake wrote. Pretty interesting that an FBI agent sharing a name with the most famous character Wake wrote is looking into a case dealing with a writer's fiction coming true. I think this is worth looking into, but what's your opinion? Just give the word and I'll start surveillance on this guy. Special Investigator Gleason. Powering the lights, but the lights are broken. Yeah, it doesn't really do anything either way. Seems so freaking pretty. Ooh, another one of those paintings. Keystone Inspection. Mr. Kirkland. We stopped at Keystone on our way to the t 
target AWE like you asked. I'm sending my report directly to you to try and keep a lid on this Grumman slash Morales desertion issue. We didn't find any sign of them here. Given their records, it's possible they've switched teams like you suspected, but I don't think that's the case. An event definitely occurred here in Keystone, and I think Grumman and Morales got caught up in it. The entire population has vanished into thin air. Reminds me of the ordinary case. But that was just the adults, if I'm remembering the file correctly. This is different. I think our guys are casualties, not traitors. If it was an altered world event, it seems to be over. We walked through the whole town and the only strange thing we noticed were markings on various buildings. Two overlapping circles with a dot in the shared space. Could be unrelated. I'll show you the pictures when I get back. In the meantime, you should send a team out here to cordon this place off and maybe get the comms guys working on a cover story. Sincerely, Agent Keenum. Two overlapping circles with a dot in the shared space. I don't remember. Was that a thing we saw in Alan Wake? It's been a long time since I've seen Alan Wake. Okay, I guess there's nothing there. That's a control point nearby. Hasn't been any hint of enemies yet, which is a little bit surprising. Tractor procedures. Bureau tractor. Item is not in bureau custody. None known. No containment procedures known, that is. Description. A Frank Elk tractor. Olive green. Dried blood on the grill when last seen. Item is capable of vocalized responses, or growls, and unmanned locomotion. Considered highly aggressive and dangerous. Hold on, that just made me think of Alan Wake. That wasn't there like a big tractor thing that tried to run over you? It was sort of like a boss, I think? Background. The item first came to the Bureau's attention after the death of William Burrow, owner of Burrow Farm uh, outside of Trenton, Texas. Local authorities arrived on scene after an employee found the mutilated body of Mr. Burrow beneath his tractor. Police arrived but were immediately driven away by the tractor. Panicked calls to federal authorities were intercepted by Bureau communications staff. A team was dispatched. Upon arrival, the agents approached the item. It responded by growling like a bear. Three agents were injured when they tried to detain the item, which escaped. Aerial searches for the item are ongoing. Speaking to Mrs. Burrow only revealed that she had a domestic altercation with Mr. Burrow earlier the night of the incident. Whether these events are connected is currently unknown. Just wondering, does it mean something? Places all over the U.S. marked three dates. 88, 94, and 2006. What does it mean? Probably nothing. Oh, I should take the power from down below and take it up here, I guess. What does that actually power? Do we have any new copy up here? Please recycle. Don't bring dogs into the office. Some of us have allergies. Sad but true. Ethics Investigation Official Findings Report Regarding the Prime Candidate Program Per authorization from Mr. Kirkland, Internal Investigation P-1429 was launched into the legality of the Prime Candidate Program by the Federal Bureau of Control. Since all known subjects relevant to the investigation used executive privilege to decline interviews, very little first-hand information was gathered. However, anonymous sources and documentation declassified by Mr. Kirkland both paint an alarmingly clear picture of systematic and something, 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 something were brought into the oldest house and placed under examination and testing with the aim of appointing one as director upon maturity. 
This program has been uh, has produced no successful cases and only resulted in the traumatic of paranaturally inclined. Not only is this in breach of the Ash Act, but it flies in the face of basic human. This investigation deemed unequivocally the prime candidate program and recommends that it be immediately. Yeah, not a big mystery what this is saying pretty much. There's a gate down there. Cool. <laughs> missing agents. Mr. Kirkland, here are the latest agents confirmed missing, presumed dead, from the containment breach yesterday. Jonathan Connor, Ezra Cruz, Caroline Dempsey, Lindsay Malcolm, Charles Murray, Derek Shaw. Letters of condolences will be delivered to you to sign prior to sending them to their families. You will be updated as soon as additional confirmations are made. Also, per your request, a network engineer checked how many cases were backed up digitally. Unfortunately, a large number of active investigations were not archived yet, and the only hard copies of reports exist behind the fire break. They're lost, I'm afraid. Do you think we can turn on the lights in here? Maybe I'm going to skip reading some things and just see if we can turn on the lights. Oh, we got the pull switch. Or whatever it's called. Yep. The astral constructs thing is still forever showing me there's something new, even though there isn't. Still don't know why that is. I'm no detective, but something definitely happened here. Yeah. I'm not seeing any buttons for lights or anything like that, so I don't know. I guess I'll just start reading stuff. Just can't even see what the hell that is. Tractor supplement. Supplementary materials. Note, miscommunication led to a local coroner examining the body of William Burrow. Uh, William Burrow, male, Caucasian. 33-year-old man found dead on his property per police report. Remains obtained for coroner's office also include blood, urine, bile, stomach contents, and bone fragments. Autopsy findings. Blunt force injuries. Um, on the head, lacerations, left ear slash cheek, blunt force injuries, extremities, dislocation right knee, complete avulsion of the right upper extremity with associated fracture of the proximal right humerus, extensive trauma, abdominal region, complete avulsion of multiple organs, including stomach, heart, liver, pancreas, kidneys, and portions of the large and small intestine, all missing from scene. Conclusion. It is my opinion that Mr. Burrow's death is not the result of a mechanical accident, as claimed by authorities. The removal of organs is consistent with animal attack. Wait, so... Right, so this was an examination done by somebody who's not in the pocket of the Bureau of Control, and thus is actually being honest with what they've seen. I don't think the Bureau of Control would have removed those organs themselves, and given what we've heard about the tractor growling like a bear and being described like an animal in its behavior, it sounds like the tractor ate or took the organs in some way? Like an animal. 
Wow, that's creepy. What did it do with them? Resignation letter. Sometime in 2019, to whom it may concern, it is with great anger and regret that I tender my resignation as head of Bureau of Investigations for the Federal Bureau of Control. I do this in protest of the rampant disregard for my departments. My staff cannot continue to work in these conditions. Previous requests and warnings have fallen on deaf ears, so I must now rely on my actions to speak louder than my words ever could. I blame this situation on our who has routinely ignored my requests for assistance in reclaiming the parts of the investigation sector lost to the loose inside. I will never forget the screams of brave agents begging for us to open that fire break. I'll carry that shame for the rest of my days. The has failed its, uh, his agents. I should never forgive him for that. Sincerely, William Kirkland. Lost to the blank loose inside. That combined with all we've read about the bear tractor thing makes me think, fuck, we're going to have to fight it, aren't we? Oh, no. <laughs> Staffing issue. Mr. Dennis. So, yes, there's an increase in altered world events cases, and yes, it would be a good idea to put together a special task force to examine exactly why that is. However, it seems that a tiny little detail has slipped through the cracks. We don't have the damn staff. If you expect us to detect, investigate, and process more AWE cases, you need to give us more people. It's simple math. Between the staff we lost in the Hartman thing and the ones who left for other departments after Kirkland quit, we're barely managing to keep up with the workload. Hell, just filling the paperwork for all the altered items we left behind in the sector has been an ordeal. Another thing, and this is going to sound paradoxical, but we have an overcrowding situation. This lobby isn't meant to accommodate a whole sector's worth of staff. We put forward a motion to move investigations to a more suitable location months ago. It better not still be sitting on your desk. The people are getting restless, and as Kirkland's interim replacement, it's your job to handle it. Best regards, Agent Grayson. There were a lot of internal political issues going on. I think that's it for the main lobby. Cauldron Lake update to Chief Investigator Dennis. It happened again, third time this year. Something certainly has it out for our... Could be raccoons. The locals certainly complain about them enough. But why the hell would raccoons keep going after a monitoring station? Doesn't add up. Anyway, I've got a bureau tech going to the site next week to take a look. Next on the list of recurring problems is the staff at the Lake House Research Station. How am I supposed to effectively keep an eye on lake if they won't let me see any data. Hell, I don't even know what they're researching out there. We need to petition them again to share their info with investigations agents. It's only a matter of time before this hits again and I want to be prepared. Anyway, if anyone at HQ asks why the Bright Falls report is a little tiny this month, uh, thin this month, tell them it's because we couldn't take any readings. In the meantime, I might invest in some raccoon traps. Sincerely, Agent Estevez. Estevez? Estevaz? Hold on. Um, how am I supposed to effectively keep an eye on Blank Lake? Cauldron Lake? I mean, Cauldron's in the name of... Oh, it's in the name of it in, like, the game's text for it. Like, in the UI, it's called Cauldron Lake Update, but actually it doesn't say Cauldron Lake anywhere in it itself. So that would explain why they blinked it out. I thought it was pointless, but no, there was a point.
official findings report regarding Dr. Rhea Underhill. Ooh. Give me the gossip on Underhill. Dr. Rhea Underhill is a professor at the University of Woodrow in the United Kingdom, where she teaches biology with a focus on botany. Dr. Underhill once worked with the Bureau as a para a parabotanist stationed in the research sector of the oldest house. She served with no incidents or demerits and is praised by those who formerly worked with her, including Dr. Darling. Dr. Underhill has no known connections to paracriminal organizations or any record of breaching her NDAs since leaving the Bureau. Her civilian behavior has been ideal, with the exception of an ongoing personal relationship with Dr. Darling that appears to have begun during their time as co-workers in the research sector and revisited intermittently ever since. Depending on the duration of her work in the oldest house, it may be required to have both parties sign a relationship clearance form. This investigation has found no compelling reason to deny Dr. Darling's request to offer Dr. Underhill an interim position with the aim of finding a solution to the mold threshold issue. Hmm. Okay, well I guess the gossip is that there is no gossip. Underhill's perfect. Just looking at the reflection of her hand in that helmet. Oh, that's so cool. Trench, official warning. Kirkland, I'm growing tired of your blatant attempts to lay your incompetence at my doorstep. I know you want this to be true, but you are head of investigations. This failure is your responsibility. What did you think would happen holding a dangerous specimen in investigations? The containment sector exists for a reason. They're better trained and better equipped for this type of work. In fact, they have admirably taken on certain AWE monitoring responsibilities that your staff are no longer capable of. This happens more and more now. And don't think your petty internal investigations have gone past my notice. You are a worm. Everything I've done has been for the benefit of the Bureau. The Prime Candidate Program only failed because of Darling. You are both failures, plotting against me. You are traitors, but the truth will emerge out of you. You are choosing to become my enemy, Kirkland. You don't want to be. Zachariah Trench, Director of the Federal Bureau of Control. Hmm. Okay, well, Trench sounds like they're half right. I mean, not storing that dangerous thing in the containment sector sounds ridiculously like a t just absolutely horrible idea. Why would you do that? But also, I think this is when their mind was kind of breaking down. Because they were, they were falling apart towards the end. I remember that much. Director Investigation Per authorization from Mr. Kirkland t -t -t Launched into the Director Zachariah Trench A recent change in Witnessed in Director Trench Including aggressive win With other staff has been observed However this investigation is aimed at Interpreting this issue rather than proving it Notable between Director Trench and Dr. Darling have been witnessed by numerous Bureau staff, although both declined to meet for an interview on the matter. Witness accounts suggest their arguments center around the Dimensional Research Wing and the kept inside. However, no evidence exists to confirm Director Trench's as anything more than interpersonal disagreements. This investigation has concluded that Director Trench's behavior is not indicative of any and that his fitness to lead is not in question. Towards the fire break, then. S 
Specimen Escape Assessment. The purpose of Internal Investigation X0397 is to examine the containment failure of specimen SI1 that resulted in the deaths of agents. An inspection report of the containment equipment three days earlier showed no faults. Investigators suspect human error to be the cause, yet no department has provided any evidence to support this. Technicians were able to recover the researchers' notes on the specimen from the internal network. On the of the specimen began displaying a sharp increase in aggressive cross-referencing that date with various logs found only two events inconsistent with the sector's daily routine. One, the air filters were changed, and two, an hour prior to the incident, a civilian named Alice something entered the sector regarding an unrelated investigation. Given their connection to the same AWE case, it's likely that Mrs. Presence is relevant to the specimen's escape and to the investigation is ongoing. Hmm, I feel like I should maybe know that name. Was there an Alice in Alan Wake? I don't even remember the name of Alan Wake's wife. Maybe, maybe it was Alice. I'm not sure. Paracriminal Profile, The Blessed Organization. This group slash individuals operated outside of the Bureau's notice for decades, perhaps longer, displaying a level of skill and caution rarely seen in paracriminal groups. A review of past cases has found various mentions of their activity over the years. In 2016, a production company called Blessed Pictures was connected to an altered item case, as well as the death of an agent from exposure to illicit paranatural materials. In 1994, a Los Angeles-based public speaker named Chester Bless was involved in the illegal use of an altered item. In 1988, a business called Blessed Repair and Service was suspected of involvement with an object of power case, perhaps even creating it. None of these businesses or individuals have ever been located. However, their connection to appearances of altered items and objects of power is too direct to be considered circumstantial. An arrest order has been issued for any persons believed to be involved with the Blessed Organization. God, we just keep hearing more and more about this Blessed Organization. Like, I wonder if that's going to show up more in this DLC. If not, I don't think they have any more planned DLC. I don't know, maybe a Control 2 or something like that. I just want to know more about what the hell the Blessed Organization is. Zane. There's nothing to worry about. Tom. The poet. The diver. You, you look different. That was just a, a role. A character. The protagonist I played in my, my old film. I'm a filmmaker. An old terror like yourself. We're working on this together, remember? An artistic collaboration. You need a drink. Mm. 
That means cheers and finish, by the way. Keep peace. Darkness. Nothing holds still. But we're very close now. You've been riding. We found a way to escape. It'll work this time. Riding? You found a way! No. I, I don't... Wait. There's something. It's my double. He's out there. I, I've seen yeah, him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nothing to worry about. I'm dealing with it. It's fine, my friend. Let me handle him. You've met him? What the hell? Now, now, come on. You misunderstand me. That was Alan Wake, the writer who went missing in that AWE case I read about. What's he doing here? And Thomas Zane was with him. The poet. No, wait. D -d -d he was a filmmaker. I, I always remember that wrong. I don't like that. It's way too quiet, isn't it? I'm just waiting for something to happen. Some, something's gonna happen. Casino? Control had stolen his life's work. This was his last chance, his final experiment. What he'd been too scared to do before. Hartman dove into the lake, was taken, devoured by hungry darkness, became the thing that had been Hartman. Only an echo of him remained, fragmented impulses on autoplay, violent, bloodthirsty darkness in the driver's seat. Emerging from the lake, the thing was captured by the FBC, brought in, contained, studied. The thing broke loose, killed everyone it could. The FPC fell back and sealed the sector. The thing was alone in the dark, lurking, roaming, waiting. Then something else came. Not darkness, but similar enough. A sound, a resonance. It shouldn't be a surprise. If there's one, why not another? The darkness inside the thing could have been immune, could have resisted, fought, could have been passed by, passed through with no effect. But it didn't and it wasn't. Maybe it had grown weaker over time, not aged. It was timeless, but weaker with no link to its source. A metamorphosis followed. The thing that had been Hartman 
went through another change. Darkness became the thing that had been Hartman. Broke loose. Killed everyone it could. Lurking, roaming, waiting. Then something else came. A resonance. The thing that had been Hartman went through another change. Interesting. It didn't take us to the other side or anything like that. It took us back to the same place, but now the way is cleared. Whoa. See a very, very, very faint bridge out there. I think I could float to it? No way. Remember the button to do the launch down at the ground and explode thing? I thought it was F, but obviously it isn't. Maybe it only works when there's an enemy to lock onto. Oh. Looks like some people got smashed under that one. Looks like Achti's been here. If that one opens, this one probably doesn't. Yeah. Creepy, damp, and abandoned. Why did Wake want me to come here? Oh, hey! First enemy of the DLC. Freaking love this game. The huge titles taking up the whole screen. Ugh. Oh, so good. Bunch of water fountains like copying and moving? Mm. Doesn't look like a house shift. No, what the hell is this? Oh, no.
Will it go away with this control point? Material shaded facet. That's new. <laughs> Look at all those feathers gently drift down. This game is so good looking. God. All right, well, I think this is a good place to end it. So I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, we're going to continue on to filing and processing, it looks like.